Okay, we want to find the frequency of red light with a wavelength of 650 nanometers. And then we want to take this answer and convert it into terahertz. Alright, so the first thing we need to think about is what's what is the setup here? How do we how do we look at this? So let's look at a single cycle of light. Okay, in this particular case we're looking at the beginning of the waveform to the point in the waveform where it's at the same point going in the same direction and we call that one cycle. It's also equal to 650 nanometers because the wavelength of a waveform is the distance of a cycle. It's the width of a cycle in meters or nanometers, whatever units we're using. Now when we do these problems we want to convert everything into meters. Okay, so so what you could do for this problem is you could you could try to remember all the different variations of a formula. For instance, one of the formulas is C equals lambda times frequency, and that's the speed of light, or really the speed in this case, but it will be the speed of light for this particular problem. And that's equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Or we could take a variation of this and say that frequency equals C over lambda, or we could say that lambda equals C over frequency. Okay, so if you want to memorize three different formulas, take the risk that you remembered them wrong, then that's fine. If you're good at memorizing formulas, then you could try that. But another way to look at this problem is let's just do some kind of unit conversions to try to get the right answer instead of memorizing a bunch of formulas. And by the way, these are all variations of this first formula and there's some simple algebraic manipulation you can do to get to any one of these three formulas. But let's look at another way. Alright, we know that the wavelength is 650 nanometers. And what we actually mean is that we have 650 nanometers per cycle. And another way of writing this, and which is something you really have to do to ultimately find the solution to this problem, is rewrite this as 650 times 10 to the minus ninth. 10 to the minus ninth is a nanometer. Meters per cycle. Okay, so we have 650 times 10 to the minus ninth meters per cycle. Now we want to find units of cycles per second because that's what frequency is.
So we want to do some sort of unit conversion to end up with cycles per second. All right, so let's look at what we have here. We have meters per cycle, 650 times 10 to the minus 9th meters per cycle. But we can rewrite that fraction. Since one cycle is equal to 650 times 10 to the minus 9th meters, then one cycle is 650 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. And 650 times 10 to the minus 9th meters is equal to one cycle. So it doesn't matter which way we write this fraction. So let's rewrite this as one cycle over 650 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Now we said before that we wanted to have units of cycles per second because that's what frequency is. That's what we're, we're being tasked to find. So what we need to do is find a unit that we can multiply our wavelength by to get frequency. And we know that this particular unit doesn't have meters in it. It has cycles and it has seconds in it. Well, it turns out that if we want, what we're going to need is a unit of meters per second. Okay, so what we really want to do is find some something that's in units of meters per second to multiply this by, which will give us the frequency. Well, that's speed. Meters per second is a unit of speed. So if we take this and multiply this by 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, we can get our units of meters to cancel out, and we end up with cycles per second. Now, we know this is going to be a large number, too, which is what we would expect frequency to be, because here we have a large number, 3 times 10 to the 8th, and here we have a very small number. Anytime we have a very large number or a large number divided by a very small number, we're going to have a very large number. So if we rewrite what we have here, we end up with 3 times 10 to the 8th over 650 times 10 to the minus 9th cycles per second, which is what we're looking for. So let's do the math and see what we come up with. And we'll just use a calculator to do this bringing up my Windows calculator here, and I'm going to plug these numbers in. So we've got 3 exponent 8 divided by 650 exponent 9. We're going to change the sign because that's a negative 9. And that's going to give us this really large number here. Now this number happens to be 4.615 times 10 to the 14th.
very large number. And really what we've done at this point is we found the frequency. It's 4.615 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second. Or 6 uh, 4.615 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, we're asked to convert the answer into terahertz. Now, one way to cap, um, convert this into terahertz is just to look at the exponent. Terahertz is 10 to the 12. In order to get this multiplier here to 10 to the 12, we have to reduce the exponent by 2. So we need to reduce this by 2, the exponent by 2, to get 10 to the 12. If we reduce the exponent here, that means we have to increase this part of the number by the same amount. So increasing this by a factor of 100 is going to be 4, 6, 1. I'm going to drop the, the last digit there. We're moving the decimal place two places to the right times 10 to the 12 hertz. And that's our answer. In terahertz, we're not done yet though because this is actually 461 terahertz. That's the right answer.